Here we're going to be looking at special items that relate to the retail inventory method. And what we're going to be going through here is just a typical example here where we have this retail store here and they have a cost or what they paid for their merchandise here. And then we would have our retail price here. That's what the store is charging the customer. And we're going to just be going through our typical items here that would be included here in our cost and our retail price here. And we're just going to be looking at this conventional retail inventory method. And what we're going to be doing is going through our example here to determine what our ending inventory is at retail. And then knowing our ending inventory at retail and our ratio of our cost to retail, we would be able to determine our ending inventory at cost. But the idea here is just to see how we, uh, how, where these special items would be included in here in our cost and our retail price. So just looking here at the, uh, the beginning here. We have a beginning inventory. Of course, we have our cost on it and we have a retail price. And then we would have some purchases here for the period again cost and also the cost of these purchases here and then their retail price, what they'd be selling them at uh, to the customer here. Now, this would be a special item here, our purchase returns here. And those would be both for the cost and the retail. It would be included here. Their cost amount would be included here as a deduction from our cost here. And then their retail price here of these purchase returns here would be a deduction here from the retail price. And then next here we have some purchase discounts. Uh, again, they are recorded here as a deduction from the cost only. So they only affect our cost here. Then we would have some freight in charges here. Again, affects the cost only. We would be adding that to the cost here and then we'd come up with our total merchandise available for sale just summing our amounts here and we come up with this total merchandise available for sale here at cost and then the total merchandise available for sale here at the retail price by summing these totals here. And then uh, for this uh, uh, conventional retail method, uh, we again here we'd be looking at or adding our markups. This would be done in either case here, both conventional or any other uh, way of evaluating our inventory. We'd be adding our markups. In this case, we had, let's say, 240,000 here. And then we'd be subtracting out our markup cancellations uh, for our, from our markups here. So we're going to get our net markups here. Now the net markups that affects here the retail price. Now that's the markup in price here. So that would only be an addition here uh, to our retail price column here. Now we come down here to our abnormal shortages here. This would be our inventory shortages and they would be abnormal amount. These wouldn't be ones that would be normally planned or uh, determined that uh, certain. So we'd have a normal shortages, but these are the ones that are beyond those normal shortages. And the abnormal shortages, they affect both the cost and the retail here. So uh, in this case, we'd be subtracting our NAM abnormal shortages here at their cost from their from our cost totals here. And then we'd be subtracting again our abnormal shortages at their retail price here from our price column. So then we'd come up with our totals here for our cost. Again, just looking at it here, we come up with a total amount of $2,237,000. That's the totals here of our cost column. And then at our retail price, we have a total here of $3,667,200. And that's just the sum total here of our at our retail price. So now we can determine our ratio of our cost to retail. And uh, that's simply here, our totals of our cost, $2,237,000 here, divided by our uh, retail price, our totals are retail price here, $3,667,200. So dividing that out here, we determine our ratio of our cost to retail at 61%. Now, this here, using this was using the conventional method here. We, uh, for determine our cost to retail here with the conventional method, we just include our markups here, but we don't include any markdowns here. So next, we have to go down here and look at our markdowns. This is what we'd be deducting here. Well, we'd be deducting our markdowns here from our retail price. And uh, say we had markdowns here of 90,000 markdown cancellations here of 40,000. So we have net markdowns of $50,000. So that would be a deduction here from the retail price. Doesn't affect our cost, just our retail price here. Now, to determine our ending inventory here, this is where we would have our sales. And I'm noting it here, this is our gross sales here. So uh, we had, let's say, 2820000 here. And then sales returns and allowances here. Well, that would be a uh, 
addition here. And again, that's going to affect only our retail price here. It doesn't affect their cost. So we would be adding that back here to our gross sales of two million eight hundred twenty thousand, the one hundred ninety five thousand dollars here. So this is going to be um, affecting here our retail price, the net amount here. Now our sales discounts, and I'm not going to go into all the reasons here, but those are not included here in the retail price or in the cost item here. So they're just not included. Don't include those here. So our net amount here for our sales uh, in the sales returns and allowance in this case was $2,625,000. Now, uh, this is uh, we come up with another item here, a normal shortage that let's just say that's inventory breakage. That doesn't affect our cost here, but it does reduce our retail price column here. In this case, I have $9,000 for it. Now, the next item here would be our employee discounts here. Again, it doesn't affect our cost. It just is a reduction here from the retail price. Uh, in this case, $16,000. So to determine our ending inventory at retail, well, this is where we just simply go up here and we take our totals here, our total additions and reductions in our retail price here, and we come up our ending inventory here at retail again. That's based on the retail. Now we have to determine our ending inventory at cost. Now remember we had all this cost column here but our ending inventory here at cost is going to be a function here of this ratio of our cost to retail that we calculated here at 61 percent so our ending inventory here at cost was in this case the retail amount here of nine hundred sixty seven thousand two hundred dollars times that sixty one percent here of our ratio of our cost to retail percentage here that would equal five hundred eighty nine thousand nine hundred ninety two dollars so that's our ending inventory at cost so we figured out both our ending inventory here at retail and our ending inventory here at cost. And just to go through our items here again, just to scan through these if you're, uh, again, those special items here, uh, starting with our inventory amount here. This purchase returns and allowances, those affect both the cost, would be a reduction here from both the cost and the retail price. And then these purchase discounts, that would be only affect our cost here as a reduction here from our cost. Freight in would be affecting only our cost here. That would be an addition to our cost. And then let's go down here and look at our other items here. Abnormal shortages uh, on inventory here. That affects both the cost, a reduction both here to the cost and a reduction here to, to the retail price amount here. And then the other item here would be our sales here. Again, note this is a sales at gross. It affects how we uh, uh, would enter here our sales returns and allowances and our sales discounts. So a special item here, our sales returns and allowances here, that would be an addition and again that would affect the price here, not the cost. And our sales discounts, that wouldn't be included in here in the price here or the cost. So just remember that. And then going down here, our last our ending items here, our normal shortage, the inventory breakage, that's only a reduction here from our price or retail amount here. And in employee discounts, that's again only a reduction here from our retail price. So neither of these short normal shortages or the employee discounts affect the cost amount. They're only inc included as a reduction here from the price amount. And then to determine our ending inventory of cost, we simply take our ending inventory here at retail times the ratio of our cost to retail amount here or the percentage that gives us our ending inventory here at cost. All right, so all I've done gone through here is just to look at the um, special items here uh, using this retail inventory method and what you'd have to include in your cost here and your retail price.